please hit that subscribe button. Hey everybody. Better suited to win the Stanley Cup this season. If you are new to the channel, the Washington Capitals, the Boston Bruins. Locked out and he scores! And we're live. Hey everybody, we're back again here for another video today and I am so excited about this one. Absolutely pumped to do this. As you can see, I have a special guest on the channel. It is Nordic97. Great, great hockey YouTuber. Um, definitely want to check his channel out. It will be linked in the description of this video. Um, so happy to have you on, man. We're going to be talking about the Flyers today and just discussing... Um, Philly and their chances here heading into the playoffs as hopefully we get hockey back uh, within the next month or so. Oh yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right, man. So um, I guess to start, we got to look back a little bit. The Flyers this year um, seem you know, to have a really good year, certainly compared to where they were two seasons ago. Um, Carter Hart, obviously massive in goal. Um, and, you know, just in general, that team was so much better than they were, you know, the year before. So um, just, you know, what were your thoughts on the Flyers this year and, and how they were able to turn things around so quickly? Well, heading into this season, I didn't know if to, to be like optimist, optimistic, I think that's what. Yeah, it's that's the word. Um, optimistic or like worried. Cause like, you look at last season, our team was not very good last season. Last season, I, we were heading into this season, we had, I think we had a few new players come in, and we really did nothing in the offseason besides the draft. So I came in a little bit worried. So, like, going into, like, December, we were, I mean, like, we were okay and meh, and then there was Oscar Lindblom when he got diagnosed with earwig sarcoma, um, mm -hmm. which is a cancer for people who don't know. That bring, I think that just like we just woke up after that and we were playing we played really good up until the um, up until March. So I think Lindblom played a very key role. Yeah. And, absolutely. And while we were going through that nine game win streak, I was watching this team and it really reminds me, I mean, I wasn't even alive back in twenty ten, but it really reminds me about the two thousand ten team that made it to the Stanley Cup Finals. Mm -hmm. He had, like, all four lines were good, and that was the same thing with this team. So, well, pairings as well. So, you look at that, you think, like, sorry. Um, you look at that and you think, yeah. So, like, if it's, like, the 2010 team, maybe it's going to be like 2010. But the difference that I see with this team from the 2010 team is goaltending. Goaltending was not very good in Philly, and now it is good. And I personally think that's why we lost 2010. We lost the finals. Mm -hmm. If we had good goaltending, we would have won. I don't see us not, not losing. So just saying maybe this year will be different. But with, with the pause and stuff, I think if we have playoffs, if whenever it happens, I think that if a lot of that hype that was like at – I mean, we talk about this a lot. A lot of a lot of the hype that was at the beginning of the season, or not the beginning, towards in the middle of the streak at the season, mm -hmm. yep, is not really going to be there anymore. Like, yes, we're still going to have like, okay, we're still doing this for Oscar Lindblom, and even though I think he's even back with the team right now, um, we're still doing this for him. But yep. you're not going to have as energy, and I think with the first round, them getting the first round by and or getting into the playoffs automatically and having to mm -hmm. wait af until after the playoff playing round. I think that affects them because you're not, you, they haven't played in like almost three or four months. And yes, they are practicing in training camp, but they don't exactly know the, like how it was like hundred percent, like they did back in March. So yeah, no, I 100% get what you're saying. So that kind of makes me, and this goes with all teams too. This isn't good. This just doesn't go with Philly. This goes with all the teams going in the bye and yeah. heck all the teams in the play around. So yeah, this, this streaks are over. Like there's no winning and losing streaks now. Everyone is resetting back to zero, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, and I th it's gonna it's gonna hurt them. And like I, it makes me kind of worried because I look back at like 
I mean, this is not even compared to what's going on right now, but Tampa back in 2019, mm-hmm. when they, cl- they clinched in January. So, so they were basically playing like two or three months of pretty much pointless games. So this, their season, their regular season basically ended in January. So I'm kind of worried that like the same thing will go in effect against Philly where like, I don't know, they think that they're like going to be able to do it and then they just get swept in the first round. But I don't know because anything can happen in the playoffs. That's, it's unpredictable. Yeah, no, playoffs are certainly very unpredictable. And you brought up 2010. Um, I was in eighth grade in 2010. And I certainly remember it because that was the year that Philly um, Philly reverse swept Boston. Oh, yeah. Went right. from 3-0 to, to game seven win. And um, that Philly team was special that year. That was That was very much a team that you didn't expect it. And they just came out of nowhere and really ran the gauntlet in the playoffs until obviously they ran into Chicago in the finals. But you made a great point about the goaltending. The goaltending duo in 2010 was Brian Boucher and Michael Layton. Not exactly your Vesna trophy candidates to say the least. You have Carter Hart now, um, who looks like the best goaltender Philly has had probably since Ron Hextall. Yeah, I agree. I 100% he's, agree. He's a legitimate potential superstar goalie in this league. And he's still only, what, 21 years old? I mean, he's just yeah. starting in the league. Um, that, that's got to be huge, having a goaltender like that heading into the playoffs that you are confident in and, and know and expect that you're going to get great goaltending night in and night out. Yeah, and... I do. I 100% agree with you that he was the best goaltender since Hextall. There was, there was really no other goaltender in Flyers history that was mm-hmm. as good as Hextall until now. And even with their backup, Brian Elliott, like I think he, I think he's really well too. Because when, because I, don't, I can't remember. It was either February. I think it was February when Carter Hart got injured for those like two to three weeks. Mm-hmm. Elliott came in and played awesome. He played as a perfect replay, perfect. I don't want to say replace. Well, he kind of was a replacement. Was it? Yeah. Replacement for Hart in that period of time. So I think that Elliot would be a very. I mean, he has playoff experience as well because he's played Blues and Flames, and they've made the playoffs and stuff. So Mm -hmm. it's. I think that this team has a has a really good chance of winning it, but they need to keep their like focus and. Hype, I guess you could say. Yeah, so. f- focus and just like keep keeping your pedal to the keeping the pedal to the floor. I think is going to be an important thing for a lot of these teams, but Flyers are definitely one of them. These teams that did really well in the regular season and had good years, they've got to pick up where they left off. They can't they can't come in thinking it's going to be easy or just you know not ready to play because these other teams will run you over and. You know, this is a year where it's so weird what's happening. We don't know, like, which teams are going to come in ready and which ones aren't. I think there's a potential for a lot of upsets this year. But at the same time, this could also be the year where, like, all the favorites just keep running everyone out of the building. Mm-hmm. We don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's such a strange playoff this year. Oh, yeah. Nothing like I've ever seen before. Yeah, n- nothing that I think there's ever been before. So, um, obviously, we talked about Carter Hart, but um, other, you know, there are some other players. I, I saw the Flyers quite a bit this year. They do get a lot of NBC games, which is good for me, not being in their home market. I still get to see a lot of them, but you get to see the Flyers on a regular basis. Who are some players that are going to be, you know, real X factors going into the playoffs? Obviously, we know Claude Giroux is a superstar, and you know, guys like that, but there's, there's got to be some guys that probably outside of Flyers country, people may not know as much about, but who are really big parts of this team. Mm -hmm. And um, let me just touch on Claude Drew for a second. I, I think that like probably this year and I, I guess next year, Mm -hmm. they have to get, if they're going to get Drew a cup this year, next year is going to be it. I I agree with that. He's going to be, he's going to be, done soon so this year next year back to your question um with the other with players that 
have been really good. Um, one one is Scott Lofton. Scott Lofton really surprised me this season. Really solid depth guy. Oh yeah, and some other people that surprised me were um, Kevin Hayes. Kevin Hayes. Glad you. Oh my God. Him. I'll I'll talk about him in a second. Keep going. Yeah, yeah he came he came in. I was thinking he signed that deal. I'm like, are are, are you are you kidding me? <laughs> yep. I was like, are you serious? And then, he, and then apparently he worked. I mean, well, not apparently. He played really well with his, for his money and with his money. So I think that he's a very key person going in here. I think he's probably become one of the best players. He's become like one of my favorite and one of the best players on his team. Yeah, no, absolutely. He had a huge year this year. And I wanted to talk about Kevin Hayes because when, when he signed that contract, when Philly gave him over $7 million per year, I trashed that contract. I absolutely shredded that deal on this channel. And I thought there was absolutely no way Kevin Hayes was worth $7 plus million per year. And he came out this year and shut me up. He had an outstanding, outstanding season, and he gave the Flyers a legit second-line center that they really haven't had in a while. Because um, oh, yeah. you know, really you know, Couturier became a legit top-line guy, and then Giroux moved to the wing and now yeah. plays on the left side, and they didn't really have that second-line center. And Kate Hayes just stepped in and absolutely filled that role to a T. And uh, huge props to him. He had a great year. And I hope it continues because that was a long-term deal. So hopefully he can do it for more than one year. But it definitely made me eat my words from the beginning of the year about that contract because he was outstanding this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of other players. It was, what, there was Voracek. Still, Voracek is one of the most underrated players in the NHL. This guy oh, yeah. consistently puts up 50, 60, even 70 point seasons, and no one talks about him as a star. Like he's if you go look at his stats page on NHL.com, it's ridiculous. You don't realize how good Jake yeah, really is. Well. Um, what is there's Matt Niskanen. Ivan Provorov was another one. Yeah, he's your best defenseman. One of the Yeah, and then Shane Gossisper, who actually really surprised me. He was surprisingly bad this season when I thought he would bounce back from his terrible year last year. But yeah, it's not looking good for Goss's fair. He's just, he's just been on the trade block, and Montreal might go out for him at some point. So. But anyways, that's unrelated. Um, there's Niskanen, Braun. Well, there's Konechny, who had – well, I mean, he's not, like, an underrated player at all, but he's – He had he's a big really year. Well. Yeah, he played great this year. There is Limblom, Patrick. What is it when I'm recording and I just can't think of players? Um, oh, you, you've hit on the big guys in the lineup for sure. Yeah, yeah. One second. Um, um, there is Justin Braun, who was surprisingly bad. Um, there were those people that we picked up at the deadline. Nate Thompson. Yep, Thompson came over and – Derek yeah. Grant. Yeah, those guys were like pretty good rentals. Uh, there's Coots. Sorry, I'm just bringing up the flyer stats here. James Van Riemsdyk. That's one I forgot to talk about. Yeah, JVR. Pretty well this season. Um, Travis Sanheim. Joel Farabee. Farabee was kind of up and down in the middle of the season, but yeah. I he's think he's so fine. young. Yeah, if they give him a chance in the playoffs, I think he, I think it, they won't regret it. Um, there was, I mean, there was Morgan Frost, who had a decent rookie year. Yeah, I mean, we went like, to I mean, Michael well. Roth will play pretty, pretty well, too. Yeah, there's, and a good veteran depth guy to have. Yeah, for sure. Feel, it feels like raffle has been on the Flyers forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. raffle has been on the Flyers, I think, as long as I've been born. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right. I think that's all i got all right well that's cool man um but yeah so uh any uh any final predictions here how how far you think this team's going i just hope they make it past the first round 
I, I know, they're probably just gonna choke in the. They're probably just gonna choke and not win the cup like they do every year. But you never know. As we said, playoffs are run for, are unpredictable. They're very unpredictable. That's for sure. And I think Philly's a talented team. Uh, they got the goaltending thing figured out. So. Um, no, they're definitely a team to watch, without a doubt. They were a top four team in the East for a reason, without without a doubt. So I guess that uh, that pretty much does it here. We're almost we're up against uh, the time as well. So I want to thank you so much for coming on, man. It was great to have you, and we got some good Flyers talking, and can't wait hopefully to see this team soon playing um, in the Stanley Cup playoffs here this summer. So thanks for coming on, man, and uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime. <laughs>